HDR can help you grab eyeballs on YouTube by making your videos brighter and more colorful. With that in mind, I recently decided to create Engadget's first HDR video on the Fujifilm X-T4 and document the process in an explainer. How hard could it be? Unfortunately, it turned into a train wreck. In the end, I ran out of time and failed to post the video in HDR. The process itself was hard enough, but in the end, I was stopped by bugs in Windows and YouTube. Since I'm stubborn, I tried again for this article and finally succeeded. I'm here to share what I learned and warn you that the process is not for the faint of heart. Put simply, HDR can elevate your work because it's brighter and more colorful than standard video. The benefits are more dramatic than 4K, which only offers extra resolution that many people can't even see. You might be thinking that few PC users have HDR monitors and you'd be right. However, plenty of folks have HDR TVs and HDR smartphones, and the view counts of popular HDR videos provide a strong incentive to jump on board. If you're feeling motivated now, let me bring you back down to earth. Producing HDR is challenging and might not be worth your time. It requires you to understand complex color space concepts, endless standards, and jargon like Maxval and Rec 2020. It's begging for a more streamlined process, but players like Sony, Samsung, Dolby, and Netflix have focused on professional HDR TV production and streaming. Little attention has been paid to YouTubers or their fans. As a result, the experience is pretty miserable on Windows and Mac PCs. In fact, HDR on YouTube is broken because of a bug in Chrome browsers and Windows 10. This is demotivating for someone like me because PC users can't easily play HDR videos on YouTube right now. We won't let that stop us though. First off, to produce HDR, you need an understanding about how it works. I'll explain it briefly here, but for a deeper tech dive, check out Engadget's previous HDR explainer video. HDR's main draw is the extra brightness expressed in nits. HDR displays can hit up to a thousand or more nits, which is many times brighter than regular monitors. By increasing brightness like that, HDR boosts the dynamic range expressed in stops between light and dark images. HDR also offers a wider range of colors called a gamut and more colors or bit depth within that gamut. Certain hues, particularly saturated colors, are visible on HDR but not on standard SDR displays. Okay, now here comes that jargon I was talking about earlier. HDR uses a color gamut called Rec 2020, while SDR uses one called Rec 709. Both are much smaller than what your eyes can perceive, but Rec 2020 more than doubles the color gamut of SDR. As for bit depth, Rec 709 HDTVs and cameras are usually limited to 8 bits of color information. This can produce banding or blocky transitions in skies or shadows. However, HDR uses at least 10 bits to deliver smoother gradients. There are two distinct flavors of HDR, PQ or Perceptual Quantizer and HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma. Both use Rec 2020, but HLG is backwards compatible with Rec 709. Since PQ is not, you have to grade twice for HDR and SDR. However, PQ can deliver more dramatic results. To make things simple, I stuck with HLG for this video. To shoot HDR, you need the right gear and you need to set it up correctly. I'll explain that here briefly, but for more information, check out my Engadget article that goes with this video. First, you need a camera that supports log recording and either RAW or 10-bit video. That way, your video is recorded into a wide gamut color space that maximizes dynamic range. HDR is high dynamic range, don't forget. As you may have guessed, an entry-level camera won't cut it. Luckily, HDR suitable models are cheaper than ever. Panasonic's GH5 can be found for $1,300, the Fujifilm X-T3 is just $1,000, and Blackmagic Design's Pocket Cinema 4K is $1,300. Blackmagic's model can record raw video, while the first two can shoot 10-bit. All of them have log recording capability. If your budget permits, take a look at the Fujifilm X-T4, BMPCC 6K, or Panasonic's S1, all at $2,000 or less. Canon's all-new EOS R6 
will be $2,500 when it arrives in a month or two. On the higher end is Panasonic's $4,000 S1H, Canon's latest $3,900 EOS R5, and Sony's all-new $3,500 A7S III. Again, all of these cameras offer log profiles along with either raw recording or at least 10-bit color depth. Personally, I used a Panasonic GH5 and BMPCC 6K because those are the cameras I normally use. An external recorder will let you capture raw video and use a lookup table or LUT so you can see your log footage with more color and contrast. Here, I'm using the Blackmagic Design Video Assist 12G, but the Atomos Shogun 7 is also a good choice. Before shooting, you need to turn on the log profile setting. The image will look washed out, but don't worry. The benefits come in post. Some cameras have a setting that lets you view, but not record, a more contrasty image. Exposure is crucial for HDR. If you screw that up, you might not be able to recover highlights or dark areas. If a shot has both, ask yourself whether detail in the shadows or sky regions is more important. A zebra or histogram overlay can help you expose correctly. For editing and grading, it's best to have a powerful PC and an HDR monitor. If you don't have those, you can still cheat your way to an HDR video, and I'll talk about that later. You'll want a fast Windows or Mac desktop or laptop, like something you could use for gaming. The minimum spec is 16 gigabytes of RAM, a four core or better CPU, and a recent AMD or Nvidia GPU. More power helps though. 32 gigabytes of RAM is much better than 16 gigabytes for video editing. I'd prefer an RTX level Nvidia, Radeon 5000 series, or a Radeon 7 GPU. Unlike with gaming, extra CPU cores greatly improve editing performance, so the more, the better. For best results, you'll need an HDR grading monitor. If you can spend four or five grand on an Apple Pro Display XDR or Asus ProArt PA32UCX, then great. However, any good 10-bit HDR monitor will do the job, and some cost under $500. You can also just use a good 4K HDR TV set if you have one, You'll need a video capture and playback device. What is that, you might ask? Well, your editing app has to send an HDR signal to your HDR monitor, but your computer's GPU can't do that. The device I'm using here, Blackmagic's $995 Ultra Studio 4K Mini, can do that. Other, less powerful devices cost as little as $115. I used Blackmagic Design's $300 DaVinci Resolve 16 Studio software to edit this because it has better HDR color grading tools than Premiere Pro. You can't use the free version because it lacks key HDR tools. The exact process of editing, grading, and exporting HDR is beyond the scope of this video. For more information, check out my Engadget article. There, you'll find links to step-by-step -step videos and a great article series by a company called Mystery Box, which helped make some of the more popular HDR YouTube videos. The main takeaway is that you have to change Resolve's color space to HDR, either PQ or HLG. I'd recommend HLG to start with because it supports both SDR and HDR on YouTube. By using HLG, you can edit and color correct your footage without the need for an HDR display or a video display device. Just cut and grade your video normally, then export it to YouTube and check the HDR image on an HDR smartphone or TV. If you don't like what you see, you can make adjustments and repeat the process until you do. Despite its enormous potential, HDR for YouTube creators is still primitive and broken in some ways. That's too bad because all the pieces are there. Features like log and even raw video have come to inexpensive cameras. And with a modest investment in a PC, display, and some other extras, anyone can create a mini HDR production studio. The problem is that it's tricky to learn and the PC features required for YouTube creators are hard to use. HDR on YouTube for PCs depends on the Chrome browser engine, but Google and Microsoft have left the Windows version in a broken state for months. Clearly, creators and their fans won't buy into HDR if the companies behind it aren't even interested. So the camera makers, editing software companies, and streaming platforms have to work together to make it more functional. Until that happens, HDR will be nothing but a niche on YouTube. 